Live from the Canadian capital, this is the GBN Television News. GBN, covering you from the Grenadine Island chain to Brooklyn, New York, via the World Wide Web on www.gbn.gd. The News Headlines is brought to you compliments. GUT Credit Union. Imagine having the home of your dreams. Imagine investing in that piece of property you can call your own. Imagine finally doing that home improvement project you've always been thinking about. It's time to stop imagining and start doing. Let the GUT Credit Union help you take the first step with fantastic rates, affordable repayments, and reduced legal fees. Make the move. Get better terms on your mortgage. Use your home equity to make those dreams a reality. Act now. There's really no place like home. GUT Credit Union. It's where you belong. This is Network News for today, Tuesday, the 21st day of September 2021. I'm your presenter, Odette Campbell. Our top stories this evening, government commits to assisting families with burial due to 72-hour mandate. Another senior citizen at the Hanarian home succumbs to coronavirus. Health officials reporting noticeable decline in positive cases. Islamic community in Grenada says close to 100% of their members are vaccinated. And around the globe this evening, mysterious aircraft spotted in St. Lucian airspace and Justin Trudeau's early election gamble backfires in Canada, but he clings to power. Coming up in sports with Prisca Patterson, transatlantic race returning to Grenada early in the new year. As mentioned, we'll have our sporting developments together with what's happening around the region and around the world with Prisca Patterson. Are you a small business and would like your business to grow? Do you have an event, products or services that people should know about? Be wise. Advertise. Book your spot on GBN Shopping Guide. Be part of Grenada's biggest advertising media, the Grenada Broadcasting Network. Call our sales department now on 440-2446 or 440-3033. Or GBN plus the number sign. Email us at sales at gbn.gd. Special conditions apply. And as always, we're looking for the positive stories. And tonight, we're looking at what could be a glance at what is hoped to be the light at the end of the tunnel for the Ministry of Health, as more people are coming out to get tested and vaccinated during the no-movement weekends. A slight reduction in positive cases is also being noted. This was announced by health officials today as they gave an update on the COVID-19 situation. The Ministry of Health has seen an increase in the number of persons coming out to be vaccinated over the past two weekends. After rolling out vaccination and COVID testing drive throughout the island on the no-movement weekends, in an attempt to flatten the COVID-19 curve in Grenada, Senior Medical Officer Dr. Mayana Charles says the encouraging news shows that their efforts are fruitful. Now, over the weekend, we administered 1,390 vaccine doses, which is an increase from the previous weekend, where we administered 507 doses. Now, the overall positivity rate over the weekend, we saw a decline, right? And it is now 18.6%. But this is encouraging, right? And it shows that we are in the right direction. But also, more importantly, it shows that persons have their guard up. Right? We see that the messages are getting true to people. You know, more people are coming out here to get vaccinated. More people are wearing their masks and practicing those preventative measures. And this is not a time for us to let our guard down. In fact, this is a time for us to more, more than ever keep our guards up. Despite the good news, Dr. Charles says that much more people need to be vaccinated to reach the safe zone with COVID-19. Grenada now has 2,337 active cases nine of which are imported and 2,329 are locals. The age of these active cases is between two months to 103 years. She also indicated that more than 80% of the active cases are not vaccinated. As it relates to the vaccination status of the active cases, 85% are not vaccinated. 
10% are fully vaccinated and 5% have received their first dose of either AstraZeneca or Pfizer. Ada has recorded 63 cumulative deaths, with the 48 occurring in the hospital and the rest in the community. The age of the deceased ranged from 18 to 103. And important to note, 97% of the deaths were not vaccinated. While the medical practitioner is optimistic that this change can improve, she is calling on those who are not vaccinated to do so as soon as possible. The call for Grenadians to take the available COVID-19 vaccines was also echoed by Director of Hospital Services, Dr. Carl McIntosh. Vaccination is a major weapon that we have in this COVID-19 pandemic. Vaccination is our major weapon that we have in this COVID-19 pandemic. If we are able to reach the numbers of 70 to 80 percent of our country, then we've won this war. There are battles and it may go up and down, but the battles are being fought. For GBN News, I am Rena Pet Thomas reporting. Well, the numbers of COVID-19 related deaths continue to rise daily with the count at 63 as of Monday. According to health officials, the number is expected to increase further as Grenada hits the peak of the infection. Elderly nursing homes have been hit hard, especially as those with comorbidities are more susceptible to the virus. We get more in this report. One more death related to COVID-19 has been recorded at Hillary and Home in St. Patrick as of Tuesday. This brings the total to 10, up from 8 reported last Tuesday. The story was first published by a local newspaper as two deaths. However, care manager at the home, Gloria Phillips Smith, confirmed to GBN they have 12 deaths in total, two of which are not COVID related. Last week, Catholic Bishop Clyde Harvey confirmed the situation at various homes. The Diocese of St. George's is responsible for via a press release. Bishop Harvey later related to GBN the additional steps the church is taking to protect residents and staff. As a matter of fact, with regard to testing and so on, that is now in place. Um, we have come to an arrangement with the ministry whereby that will be done regularly. And I hope that works because in the early stages, um, it was very difficult to get a team of St. Patrick to do what needed to be done. But I think the one good thing, one of the good things that will come out of all of this is that people will realize the urgency of both testing and vaccine. The Hilarian home has now recorded two more deaths within the last week, while no new figures have been confirmed at the Hillview home, which reported two COVID-related deaths, and none at the St. Martin's home in Koshu. I am Gerard Joseph for GBN News. We heard Dr. McIntosh stressing the importance of vaccination a short while ago. Well, a Grenadian pastor in New York says he believes strongly in vaccination and he urged his church members early in the game to get vaccinated. Pastor Martin Scott is originally from Mardi Gras in St. David and also from Kariakou. He now shepherds the Hebron Evangelical Church in Brooklyn, New York. Pastor Scott says despite all the hullabaloo among naysayers, he has seen the benefits of vaccination. Thank God we didn't have anybody at Hebron Evangelical Church who, um, who died of, of COVID because very early I, I told him, I said, you guys get the vaccine because I'm a, I'm a very high believer in, in this vaccine. So I said to them on the pulpit, get the vaccine, get the vaccine. And that helped. It helped in a tremendous way. And some people may tell you that there's separation of church and state and as such, you should not be using the pulpit for that. What is your response to that? Well, again, we are not just spirit. We are body, soul, and spirit. And so we have to cater for the whole man. We have to cater for people uh, needs. Sad and lonely, two of the words being associated with COVID deaths around the world. 
Moving on this evening, Health Minister Nicholas Steele says financial assistance is available for families who cannot afford to bury their loved ones who died as a result of COVID-19 and have them buried within the stipulated 72-hour period. He also outlined other support mechanisms being implemented for those who've lost their loved ones. We get details in this report. With the 72 hours allotted time given to families to bury their lost loved ones due to COVID-19, the question asked is what if some families cannot raise the required burial cost within the given time? Minister for Health Nicholas Steele says government has always had a place where grieving families can obtain financial assistance to leave their loved ones to rest. There's always been, uh, through social development, support for persons who cannot afford uh, to pay for the funerals. There's a strict process in terms of qualification for that, but government has tried, always has tried as best as possible to give persons support. That would not change in this period. So those who, who qualify for that support um, would be eligible to get that support. Coming to terms with losing a family or friend is not an easy process, and the new rules surrounding the burial of COVID-19 bodies are not making it easier. As of this week, all COVID-19 barriers will either be closed casket or cremation. Only two persons are allowed to view the body for identification purposes, far from what was the norm when it comes to saying goodbye. Minister Steele says there is some psychosocial support implemented to help those who are affected. Yes, that is of great concern to us. We have put certain uh, uh, contingency plans in place and have had these plans for quite some time. But each and every one of our, our entities, so the police themselves as well, they will have their supportive network. Um, we do for our health care. Um, we also have tapped into uh, volunteers abroad who will assist with that counseling to give us that, that, that additional, it will be a surge that exists right now for counseling. So yes, it is there. Um, whether it is enough or not, time will tell. The minister was speaking on government's weekly post cabinet briefing. For GBN News, I am Rena Pear Thomas reporting. Thanks, Rina, for that report. And this is Network News. Still to come from us, New York funeral director commends his Grenadian counterparts for putting preparatory measures in place amid COVID-19 spikes. He says you can be frightened by the sight of the containers, but you have a choice between burial and 72 hours. We'll see what that story does it in the second segment of news. Republic Bank remains committed to providing all its valued customers with high quality and personalized service in a safe and comfortable environment. In order to maintain COVID-19 protocols while serving you, it has become necessary to arrange an appointment with your relationship officer or the customer service representative at your branch for the following products and services. Loans, overdrafts, credit cards, new accounts to include savings, checking, certificate of deposit, and foreign currency, reactivation of dormant accounts, and private banking for existing customers only. Me. You may also log on to our website, complete the application form for the service required, and submit via email to your specific branch. Requests for appointment can also be emailed to customer service at republicgrenada.com or via private message on our Facebook page. For private banking service, kindly contact your specific branch via telephone. We look forward to welcoming you. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Across Grenada, Caracou and Pity Martinique, Flow has been the leading telecommunications provider for decades. As we continue to work for you, we are modernizing our fixed network and transitioning all customers to our latest technology. By the end of 2021, the new network offers customers faster speeds, better quality, and a more reliable service experience with faster fault detection and repair time. Upgrading to the new network is free. Just visit any of our retail outlets. Look out for sales agents in your community 
call our virtual store at 444-3569 or send us a text via WhatsApp at 407-3569. Remember, as we transition to our new network, we are simultaneously shutting down our older network. To avoid service interruption, arrange to make your move to the new network as soon as possible. Flow, committed to connecting our communities. Looking for a professional team offering around-the-clock, private and confidential nursing, medical care and aid services? Then look no further. Nurses Care Grenada is a fully certified, insured and licensed healthcare facility committed to the reduction and eventual elimination of healthcare disparities affecting the nation. Our registered nurses will visit you at your home, assess your condition and provide the required treatment under the directive of a doctor. So why worry when there's Nurses Care Grenada? Give us a call, 406-3928. Nurses Care, reliable, trusted professionals we can all depend on. How did you get your electricity bill to be so low? For one, we size our transformers just for what we need. And we unplug transformers, chargers, and other devices when they're not in use. We also replaced our light bulbs with LED. I even replaced the seal on my refrigerator door to keep the cold air in. How do you know if it is working? We pay attention to the usage history table. Over time, our average usage has decreased. Relic, energizing our Grenada. Ridgeway Residences, a modern, exclusive residential community offered by Ariza. Purchase one of our completely built houses or let us build for you by simply choosing your lot, choosing your home design from our selection, and let us do the rest. Owning a home does not have to be a frustrating process. information, contact Arisa Credit Union on 415-0994 or send us an email on info at ridgewayresidences.gd. Ridgeway Residences, hassle-free home ownership. Five lucky customers are enjoying free drinks, free electricity, free fuel, extra cash account, free internet, cable, and data all for one year. Hubbard's live free for one year big promotion. With just two draws remaining, you can be the lucky winner in August and September for property or vehicle insurance for one year. Free cooking gas for one year and the big free groceries for one year. Live free for one year with Hubbard's in association with Sol Gas, Flow, Grenadian General Insurance, Carrot Brewery, Coca-Cola Grenada Bottling, Grenlick, Communal Corporate of Credit Union, Dutch Lady Milk, Promo, Danny, and Supreme. Hubbard's Live free for one year big promotion. DPN leads, the others follow. This segment is brought to you by Republic Bank. There's a reason we have been here to serve you for the past 40 years. A reason we have continued to grow. A reason we have continued to celebrate. That reason is you. We have been here to help you plan for your future and here to help you celebrate your achievements. We continue to be here, even when the future seems unclear. Because one thing is certain, you're the reason we care. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. And welcome back this evening. A Grenadian funeral director based in New York is seeing foresight on the part of local funeral directors who recently bought in refrigerated facilities to store bodies amidst a spike in deaths attributed to COVID-19. The sight of the containers may not evoke the best thoughts in one's mind, but according to Mr. David Williams, reality calls for preparation. If the sight of a refrigerated container spooks you out, you need to start thinking about choices. Grenadian funeral director David Williams, who operates in New York, says the coronavirus pandemic narrows down one's choice. Commenting on the panic setting here, after a refrigerated container was sighted close to the compound of the Mongay Mental Hospital, he said... Uh, you have two realities. You have the containers and you have the 72 hours. Which one are you going to choose? 
So the, the, um, the container is a form of preparation. Uh, when we were flooded with bodies last year, which in a, when you go from five folders a weekly to 55 in a week, it's a hard, it's management. Your management mode has to kick in. Mr. Williams commended the funeral directors in Grenada who acted proactively and brought in the refrigerated facilities and, in other cases, upgraded their capacity. He says in New York, at the start of the pandemic, it was chaotic and Grenada needs to avoid that pitfall. We were calling the medical examiner, no information. The Department of Health, no information. You quickly realize you have to have refrigeration. You were inundated with calls. You were getting calls. We had to shut the phone down. When you shut the phone down, you can't get to the to the to the calls from the answering service at the end of the day because you're finishing two and three in the morning. So it was a, a situation you have to quickly address. Uh, at least Bailey's first new facility may hold fifteen, but who knows how many you may have next week? You have to be prepared. Wayne Watts is also a Grenadian funeral director operating out of the tri-state area in New York. He says the worst thing that could happen in a pandemic is a lack of preparedness. Because in the event that we are experiencing many deaths, then there may not be enough space in the morgue at the hospital to maintain the body for the period of time that is necessary. So by having in the container, you are now allotting more space to house the, your loved one. And it is true, the site of the container is telling us that that is coming or there will be a lot of number of dead coming. But we are in a pandemic, so the possibility does exist. When we face with the pandemic here in New York City, no one were, pre were prepared. The hospital was not prepared. The medical examiner was not prepared. Funeral director David Williams says even in this frightening and frustrating period, families need to be treated in a gracious manner, and he firmly believes that all will be well once people get past the fright created by the sight of a container. My funeral home was not no less, I had no less than over 70 bodies here on a given period, at a given time. So how do you make preparations for that? We were never prepared for that. So you look into a, a refrigerated truck, you're trying to pr preserve their loved ones, not to be disrespectful, but to preserve that loved ones, to hold the body for a longer period. And if they are not able to do such, then you have to bury the body. Mr. Williams and Mr. Watts were guests on GBN's Beyond the Headlines program on Monday night. For GBN News, Janelle McDonald. Despite the challenges being faced, officials of the Royal Grenada Police Force say they will continue to effectively enforce the emergency guidance for yet another two weeks as we enter no movement weekends. Inspector Trevor Rodney appeared on GBN's Good Morning Grenada program with host Blossom Alexis Welsh. With the government's extension of its COVID-19 regulation for another two weeks, members of the Royal Grenada Police Force say they are ready to continue enforcing the emergency law stipulated. In an interview with GBN inspector attached to the Community Relations Department, Trevor Rodney, indicated that the past two weeks were a success. He said the force is already adjusting to the changes made while implementing strategies to curb challenges faced in the previous weeks. Of course, every time you have an operation, you, and you, you, you would have done your postmortem, you must see one or two areas that you want to tighten on, and you must see one or two areas you want to make adjustments. And of course, with, with uh, the RGPF, we're certainly going to look at, at, at some areas. As I indicated, we've seen some violations. We're going to be looking much closer in terms of how we monitor those violations. Rodney says that over the past two weeks, the RGPF has seen a great level of public cooperation and assistance towards officers. While this is so, duty officers still had to issue several tickets to those who went contrary to the law. We issue a number of tickets to persons. The, the major violations were uh, failing to remain in a place of residence, at your place of residence, and failing to have 
have wear the masks and, and appropriate face coverings. And, and those areas are, are concerned. And of course, going forward, we, we try to be a little tighter in terms of, of enforcing the law with regard to what we saw. We want ticket to be issued for these opens. I mean, is, is a concern. And we had um, in excess of um, in excess of, of 50 tickets issued. The COVID-19 regulations announced by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell on September 4th expires at midnight tonight, September 21st. However, new regulations issued on Monday will see the continuation of restrictions that will end midnight on October 4th. According to Minister for Health Nicholas Steele, there was only one change made to the guidelines. Save and accept one change which is the hours that persons are allowed to utilize our beaches and rivers has been extended to 1 p.m. in the day instead of 10. But there are still no movement weekends the next two weekends. The curfew during the week remains the same, 7 to 5, and the no movement weekends start from 5 p.m. on Fridays. Everything else, in essence, is the same um, as we have experienced in the last two weeks. Our team does hope, as well as the cabinet, and I'm sure most, if not all of us as Grenadians, hope that this would be the last two weeks that this would be necessary. For GBN News, I am Rena Pet thomas reporting. And it's always nice when we can bring you a light moment, and we achieve that through the nightly GBN ISO segment. A good eye catches all. GBN ISO is brought to you by Clairvision. Life is beautiful if only you can see it. Clear Vision Eye Center helps you do just that. We provide expert service, classy eyewear, and cutting edge technology, all with a quality customer experience. See better, feel better, and look better. Meet us today at clearvisiongrenada.com or call 444 0055, WhatsApp 409 0055, or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Clear Vision Eye Center. Let's see life and the world with a clear vision. Our reporter's lens captured the Minister of Health Nicholas Steele and the Minister of Civil Aviation Clarice Modest Cowan at the Marin Community Centre and Resource in St. Mark. Approximately 95 persons got tested and a number of persons were vaccinated. According to Minister Cowan, quote, When we work together, we are sure to achieve more. Together we can beat this virus. Unquote. We thank our ISO reporter for this submission. Continue to send us your photo and video submissions via WhatsApp on 405-3052 or our other social media platforms. And still to come from us, the Islamic community here says 96.5% of their members are vaccinated against COVID-19. We'll bring you that story and more in the third segment of news. And we also to look ahead to sports and our look across the region and across the world with Prisca Patterson. Do stay with us. Everybody get ready, because on Sunday, October 3rd from 6 p.m., the 29th edition of Waggy Virtual Bingo is on. And this time, you can win a whopping 10,000 U.S. dollars. And it's only 10 U.S. dollars per ticket. What are you waiting for? Invite a friend. Tell them all about the fun and excitement when you play Waggy Virtual Bingo. Get your tickets from GoToFed.com or numerous box offices island-wide in Grenada. All overseas players. Tickets are only available at GoToFed.com. Fed.com. Sunday! Sunday, October 3rd. Join the fun online. Play Waggity Virtual Bingo. Remember, it's the new way to play bingo. Color by 
Artisans. A message by the Grenada Distillers Limited. You want a hand sanitizer to do three things. Kill germs, be gentle, and to go where you go. You can get all of that in our hand sanitizer. Hard on germs, gentle on hands, affordable. Remember, hand sanitizers contain alcohol. Keep away from heat and flames and avoid contact with eyes. Available at retailers island-wide. A message by the Grenada Distillers Limited. Lucky customers are enjoying free drinks, free electricity, free fuel, extra cash account, free internet, cable, and data all for one year. Hubbard's live free for one year big promotion. With just two draws remaining, you can be the lucky winner in August and September for property or vehicle insurance for one year, free cooking gas for one year, and the big free groceries for one year. Live free for one year with Hubbard's in association with Sol Gas, Flow, Canadian General Insurance, Caribbean. Coca-Cola Grenada Bottling, Grenlick, Communal Corporative Credit Union, Dutch Lady Milk, Promo, Danny, and Supreme. Hubbard's live free for one year big promotion. This is GBN. We've got the means, the power, and the medium. This segment is brought to you by Flu. Across Grenada, Caracou and Pitti Martinique, Flo has been the leading telecommunications provider for decades. As we continue to work for you, we are modernizing our fixed network and transitioning all customers to our latest technology. By the end of 2021, the new network offers customers faster speeds, better quality, and a more reliable service experience with faster fault detection and repair time. Upgrading to the new network is free. Just visit any of our retail outlets. Look out for sales agents in your community. Call our virtual store at 444-3569 or send us a text via WhatsApp at 407-3569. Remember, as we transition to our new network, we are simultaneously shutting down our older network. To avoid service interruption, arrange to make your move to the new network as soon as possible. Flow, committed to connecting our communities. And welcome back. The Islamic community in Grenada says almost all of its members are fully vaccinated. This was one of the points discussed at a joint press conference on Monday, including government officials, religious leaders, and funeral directors. The meeting was called to bring light to measures the government will be implementing to safeguard its citizens against COVID-19 and to announce changes to funeral engagements. Addressing the media on Monday, Grenada's Islamic Foundation, represented by Musa Jassat and Dr. Fedros Khan, called out religious leaders to recognize the power they have to inform the decisions of people through education. We did a survey basically of the percentage of people that are vaccinated in our community. And 96.5% of the respondents are actually vaccinated. So when I compare that with the overall vaccination rate in Grenada, I think that should serve as an example of how we as religious leaders or people in the community can basically help the Ministry of Health and the government in making sure that people are taking the vaccines. As a religious organization, he said they have capitalized on various platforms to achieve this goal and offered these as recommendations to others. We've been able to leverage the power of social media, WhatsApp mostly, to provide information to people that is authentic. Now, we also had to counter misinformation because I think at the time we are dealing with two different kinds of pandemics. Yes, we're dealing with COVID-19, but at the same time, we're dealing with the pandemic of misinformation. He said as a country, we should count our blessings and consider ourselves very fortunate to have had too much time to prepare. Unfortunately, a lot of us didn't take that road to get vaccinated. I wish we had. So now after seeing the amount of deaths and the number of hospitalizations and the cases that are rising, I think this should serve as a strong reminder to everyone to actually look for those means that God Almighty has given us. Christina John, GBN News. 
Having the managerial issues clearly identified by government via a report which surrounds the use of tractors for farmland preparation, a motion to resuscitate the program was introduced by the senator in representing the agricultural community in Parliament, Roderick Sinclair, citing the importance of such a program to increase in production, productivity, and effectively utilizing mechanization in agriculture. Senator Sinclair said it warrants a program restart. Gerard Joseph reports. Noting the previous failures of the land preparation program while operated by government as well as private individuals, Agriculture Senator Roger Sinclair called for the return of the tractor service for farmers. Senator Sinclair highlighted the effectiveness of this service on the sister island of Kareku. And so all we are asking in this motion is for the government to get this service start back. We are not able to buy 10 tractors, but we might be able to buy one. And then you grow, and you also provide training opportunities for other young persons, because most of the staff of there also, as they are there, most of them are close to retirement. Senator Sinclair underscored the importance of food security and increased productivity. At the end of the day, while that is happening, they say while the grass is growing, the horse or the cow is starving. So we don't want to be starved as citizens because we want food security. We want good land preparation, which could also improve with efficiencies and reduce cost. In response, leader of government business in the Senate, Simon Steele, said that the government strongly advocates for a thorough review to be completed. We can't just re-establish something. There have been too many missteps, and we cannot afford to repeat those. And we can't afford to go into this um, without due consideration, come up with a third model unless a thorough review takes place and all of the analysis takes place and there is thorough consultation. This Senator Sinclair accepted an amended version of the motion proposed by government which included the need for a review and consultation with stakeholders. I am Gerard Joseph for GBN News. Thanks, Jared. And this is Network News. When we come back, we'll take a look at what's happening across the Caribbean. And we'd also look at what's on the sporting lineup with Prisca Patterson. You won't want to miss that. It's your summer everything loan from the communal. Borrow up to $10,000 for all your needs. School supplies, staycation, home renovations, appliances or furniture. You can have it all with a summer everything loan. With competitive interest rates and same day approvals, you can't beat this loan special. Not a member? Join today to get onto this exciting offer. It's your summer everything loan from the communal. Apply today and take advantage of this exciting offer. Visit the nearest communal branch or call Call us at 440-1755 for more information. Lending terms and conditions apply. Are you looking for quality herbs and herbal supplements? Or are you thinking about having a complete body cleanse to jumpstart your health? Then no need to look further. Visit Nirvana Natural Health Clinic, Detox Center, and Natural Health Store. We carry a wide range of herbal products for kidney and gallstone cleansing, male sexual enhancement formulas, asthma and sinusitis, gas and bloating, acid reflux, constipation, arthritis, imbalance hormones, female health issues, liver cleansing, weight loss, and so much more. Also available, colonic irrigation, holistic health consultations, essential oils, and diffusers. Look out for our online natural health store coming soon. Call 231-6642-418-7115 or 449 to find out about our delivery options or to book an appointment. Visit us at Belmont St. George's, close to the Forledge, Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Nirvana Natural Health Clinic. Detox your way to health.
tonight, sports and fans. Tonight, we start with aquatic sports. A multi-health showdown is predicted for the 2022 Transatlantic Boat Race, which returns to Grenada early in the new year. The 2021 edition concluded in Antigua due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Entry is still open for the race, which starts from the Canary Islands on January 8th next year. More than 20 teams are expected to race the 3,000-mile course across the Atlantic Ocean. They will end at the Camper Nicholson's Port Louis Marina, Grenada. The global governing body has donated $45,000 worth of equipment to St. Lucia Boxing Association. A representative, David Christopher, says that this will help create wider involvement in various parts of the island. It came from Aibo, our new president, Omar Kremlis. He made these promises, he made his promises, promises to all of the Caribbean um, presidents that support him. And who, who, all who didn't even support him, that he's going to give us equipment. So we have um, boxing gloves, we have skipping ropes, we have headgears, we have uniform, we have bags, we have mouth shield, hand wraps, um, and all parts of our equipment. Christopher says the equipment will help them to develop a better cadre of boxers to represent the island. Well, we, we train on the low right now. We have a few boxers training. We have a boxer from even from Barbados, if you see right now, training for the wars. We have Ryan Charles prepare for the wars in um, Siberia soon. Um, we have a few young boxers we working with. The big amount of boxers is not here every day because of COVID. It kind of pushes us back you know, in a big way because the, the big crowd in the, in the gym, you've not seen it right now due to COVID. But our program is going on. He's working on training training programs, we're doing a lot of virtual training for our coaches and for some of our boxers and administrating administrators, so we're getting there, even notice the gym now is really up, up beat right now, we have all the equipments, before these equipments arrived, we had already um, redressed our, our new gym, so we're more or less just waiting for the COVID to subside so we can really move with boxing in a big way. Robert Lewandowski has received the annual European Golden Shoe. He copped the prestigious award after scoring 41 goals for Bayern Munich. The award is given to the top goal scorer in all domestic leagues across Europe. Lewandowski is the second German-based player to win the title. The Polish striker's tally last season was the highest since Cristiano Ronaldo claimed the award in 2015. He did so with Real Madrid netting 40 48 goals. Lewandowski comfortably outscored Lionel Messi and Ronaldo in his 29 Bundesliga appearances. Now let's take a look at what's happening around the region. Tonight we start on the neighboring island of St. Lucia where a mysterious aircraft was spotted. More in this report. For more than 30 minutes on September 18th, a mysterious aircraft appeared to circle over St. Lucia. The aircraft's low flying altitude and repetitive flight path caused a stir in communities from Denry to Marshy and Babano along the island's northeast region. Curious onlookers took cell phone video of the hovering plane. Enhanced photos suggest the aircraft was a four-engine carrier. On September 20th, NBC Prime sought comment from the relevant authorities. 
First, the police force deferred comment to the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority, SLASPA. SLASPA officials explained there was nothing unusual to report about the aircraft. So was it a drill or part of a more elaborate law enforcement-led operation? Or was the plane and its pilots under duress? In the more than 48 hours since the mysterious aircraft left St. Lucian airspace, none of the local authorities, including the Department of Civil Aviation, have publicly addressed the overhead spectacle. It is also unclear if a police motorcade recorded on video rushing to the coast where the plane flew over was connected to the commotion. Rihanna Isidro, NBC Prime. St. Lucians and Caracom citizens anxiously awaiting Cuba's COVID-19 vaccines have been assured that they will not be disappointed. Cuban President Miguel Diaz-Canal has assured Caribbean and Latin American leaders that Havana will make the vaccines available. The assurance came when, while the leaders met in Mexico Saturday to discuss the impact of the COVID-19 virus on the region and how to respond. In international developments, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's Liberal Party will form Canada's next government. This follows a tightly contested general election against his conservative rival. Jody Vance reports from Montreal, Canada. The celebration came swiftly for Justin Trudeau on Election Day. You are sending us back to work with a clear mandate to get Canada through this pandemic and to the brighter days ahead. And my friends, that's exactly what we are ready to do. Moments before the victory speech, the Canadian Prime Minister's key rival in the election campaign, Conservative leader Aaron O'Toole, threw some barbs. And I told him, if he thinks he can threaten Canadians with another election in 18 months, the Conservative Party will be ready. The rumblings of an expensive election only to be almost exactly where the Liberals were on August 15th when it was called by the Prime Minister will continue, as will questions about the future of both leaders. But on election night, the mood was very optimistic, even sounding as though a majority had been secured. I hear you when you say that you just want to get back to the things you love, not worry about this pandemic or about an election that you just want to know that your members of parliament of all stripes will have your back through this crisis and beyond. And certainly his supporters were very happy with the win, majority or not. We did a lot of hard work and like it paid off. So we didn't expect this result, but yeah, it's better like to be on the top. The country finally has gotten a progressive government that is going to make sure that Canadians stay safe and that we move forward for everyone. So many unknowns, so much unexpected, certainly a stressful campaign for Canadians from coast to coast to coast. It's over. Justin Trudeau is again Prime Minister of Canada. Jody Vance, Al Jazeera, Montreal. Climate change has been a topical issue at the UN's General Assembly. The UN has been doing its best for climate change to be the focus of this year's General Assembly. Kristen Salumi has more from New York. The UN pulled out all the stops to highlight the urgency of climate change ahead of this year's General Assembly, including an appearance and a new video by K-pop sensation BTS. But the real work took place in an informal meeting hosted by the UK's Prime Minister Boris Johnson, along with the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Antonio. Sweden and Denmark came through with new financial commitments, putting the international community closer to reaching its goal of $100 billion in climate finance for developing countries. But the Secretary General warned that funding alone won't be enough to keep climate change below internationally agreed upon limits. Governments must shift subsidies away from fossil fuels and progressively phase out coal use. If all planned coal power plants become operational, we will not only be clearly about 1.5 degrees, we'll be well above 2 degrees. And the Paris targets would go up in smoke. 
camera, U.N. officials will tell you that more funding from the United States and less reliance on coal by China are crucial to meeting targets set out by the Paris Climate Agreement. And so far, neither are guaranteed. China, now the world's largest economy behind the United States, uses more coal than any other country and has plans to build even more factories. What do you say to the developing world when you ask them about coal? Funding is one thing, but to ask them to cut coal when countries like the United States and the United Kingdom built their economies on fossil of fuels, course. how do you convince them to do that? You can do it, is what I say. You can transit away from, from coal. And uh, the, the UK uh, itself, I think, uh, in, in 2012, 40% uh, of our, uh, our power came from coal. Uh, it's now less than 1%. When I was a kid, it was 70%. Uh, and, and that's partly uh, because of, of gas, but it's mainly because of the arrival of uh, clean, green renewables. But the clock is ticking towards COP, the next major climate conference scheduled in November. And without major commitments, many fear it will be the same old song and dance. Kristen Salumi, Al Jazeera, the United Nations. And that's it for a look at regional and international developments. I'm Prisca Patterson. Good night. In the main points in the news, government commits to assisting families with burial due to 72-hour mandate. Another senior citizen at the Hilarion home succumbs to coronavirus. Health officials report noticeable decline in positive cases. Islamic community in Grenada says close to 100% of their members are vaccinated. In Around the Globe, we heard from Prisca Patterson, mysterious aircraft spotted in St. Lucian airspace, and Justin Trudeau's early election gamble backfires in Canada but he managed to cling on to power. And in sports, also with Prisca Patterson, we learned that the transatlantic race returns to Grenada in January. That's the GVN Network News for today, Tuesday. I'm with Ed Campbell. On behalf of the entire news team, we'll see you again tomorrow. Just in case you miss any part of this newscast, you can catch up with us on our social media platforms. So long for now.